Fish on. Ah, oh, I just had to come this way. What do we got? It's a jack. There you go, guys. There you go. Little tiny jack on fly. Way up here in Cape York, far north Queensland. Welcome back to another episode, guys. This is just going to be a quick one today because I'm trying to... I'm packing up camp. Dan's already left and I'm trying to get some tucker for while on the boys back at the station, the traditional owners of this land. Now this little guy here is a bit small, but um, I've walked and walked and walked and flicked so many bloody flies around and I've just come to this deep hole here, this croc slides here, and I've finally got a fish. So let's see what else we can come up with. This is a good gesture to Wall, the traditional owner of the lands that we're on here. Um, I'm going to try and catch some mud shell and hopefully a fish just to um, drop off at the station on my way out just to say thanks for having us here and and just um, giving us such an amazing experience like coming out hunting with us and showing us mud shell and spearing and um, Dan and I just feel blessed to have, to have been allowed in here so I'm going to go for a quick walk now I don't have much time um, I've actually got to get going today my wife is um, is uh, pregnant and soon to be giving birth to our second child so I need to get back home and uh, be there for, for that, for the build up to that. So that's really exciting. Dan's just taken off, so it's just me. Um, I'll probably come back and do a tinny review um, because we're getting so many people asking more questions and the, and the first tinny review obviously just wasn't enough. So I'm gonna go over the tinny again real quick and then I'm gonna hit the road and start heading south. Um, so make sure you keep an eye out. If you are interested, the tinny review might've even already come out because I don't know how I'm going to play all these episodes out, but for now I'm going fishing and um, ch and hunting mud shell. So all you young fellas out there who like your fishing, like your tinny adventures and all the stuff Dan and I do, get yourself a fly rod. Doesn't have to be top of the range. This one's a Sage, which is a really good fly rod, um, and I use this one. I think it's a seven weight for lots of intermediate kind of stuff like this, chasing small bar around. Um, and then you got to go up to like a 10, 10 weight for big sort of saltwater saltwater stuff. Um, and then I've got a three weight to, t to chase like tiny little JPs and that kind of thing. Um, it's so much fun. Even if you're not catching fish, just the casting and learning. Make sure you get yourself one. Now these are only little fish, but guys, this is what I was saying earlier. Get yourself a fly rod and get into some of this action because they're only little fish, but it's just so much fun. And most of the time you can see your fly just below the surface and it's like all surface action. You get to see the whole thing, the whole strike. Don't know what we're gonna do here. I might throw a few more casts. I'm gonna get the, get the fly out of his mouth. I'll throw a few more casts in here, I reckon, see if there's a big one to give to Wall, and then um, and then we'll get moving. But I'm pretty stoked, finally catching some fish on the fly rod. Look at that. Very nice.
did you see that? I think he was more scared than I was. Jeez. Imagine that thing running at you. That was a big scrub bull. Um, so a lot of you have already seen the first one. It was called the ultimate, the ultimate big little tinny or something like that. Dean and I were on the ward up and we gave you a basic review of the tinny. Now, I'm getting so many more questions since then and that was a big hit. There's probably nearly 20,000 views on it. Um, and yeah, it's still getting questions. So if you've seen that and it was enough, I apologize for making another one. Um, but heaps of people are asking more questions, so I have to put it out there and show you a little bit more detail. So I'm out here, I'm on a trip, I'm on location, Cape York, far north Queensland, on the east coast. Um, if you haven't seen our episodes, make sure you jump back to our channel and watch what this bad boy can do because we have put it through its paces. So we'll begin with, this is the Stesco Tripper. I think it's a 3.75 or a 3.7 thereabouts. Um, I'm not sponsored by Stesco, I'm just giving a review and I absolutely love this boat, Dan and I love it. We put it through hell yesterday, coming back through, I don't know how many knots the wind was, but it was blowing its ringer out um, on the east coast of Cape York. So, okay, let's get back to the boat. It cut through that water, no worries. Coming up over swells, back down the other side, Dan was standing right here in the middle holding a rope from the bow and it displaced the water perfectly, it did really well. Um, we fished this boat in mostly in uh, estuaries and freshwater streams and we've chosen this style of boat because it's quite lightweight i'd say the tinny itself would weigh before the fit out maybe 86 to 95 kilos thereabouts something like that the motor is a mercury two stroke 15 horsepower it probably weighs about 35 kilos thereabouts um, we can lift this boat up over sandbars rock bars um, you know over logs if you go back to our Wenlock series we did six days drifting down the Wenlock in this boat this is what this boat was fit out for all this cast deck and everything um, and we were able to push it over sandbars and just drag it through anything and that's why we fit this tinny out it's the perfect fit out for Dan and I um, doing wild reaches now I'm sure we're getting a lot of feedback and a lot of uh, interest in the videos, uh, the tinny videos, because there's a lot of young fellas out here who can afford a tinny. And so I'm basically going to show you how I've fit this out. Um, I'm not recommending to do it this way. I'm just telling you that this is how I've done it and you can choose to watch or um, take your own ideas from it and go and build it your own way. But we'll start at the stern and we'll work our way forward. So this is the the existing seat height, so that's aluminium under there. Uh, full flotation in the seats, front and back. Um, so at the back, I've just kept it at that height. I've wrapped the seat in marine carpet. You can get that from Bunnings or wherever you want, um, so a carpet, carpet supplier. We've got piano hinges here, which I'll show you at the front on the little camera. Piano hinges either side that lift up a hatch. Now this side, we've, we've used marine ply. Um, this side we have the fuel so we've got a 25 litre fuel tank on this side when we do trips like we did for the last couple of days we had a second uh, fuel tank on board with i think 20 litres an extra 20 litres just in case that little 15 choose uh, choose stuff all so we didn't even use the full tank we probably used maybe 15 litres to do a trip like that which is pretty amazing but there's still plenty of storage in there even as you can see there even after having the fuel tank in there we can throw cherub and pots and that kind of thing in there um, underneath here I've got a, so I've just got like a plumbing flange here and the fuel pipe comes up through there, the fuel hose and into the outboard. Anderson plug here. Uh, this Anderson plug is for the solar panel. So we put uh, a solar panel up over the back here. Now we've normally got a big frame that hangs out over the outboard. Hang on a second. Flat battery. Alright, we're back in action. Um, so yeah, normally over the back we have a, an aluminium frame, it's like a 20-25mm tube bent up to sit the solar panel on top and it hangs out over the outboard, it's out of our way for fishing. Uh, you'll see in this trip we just had the solar panel, because we did an ocean voyage, uh, it was a lot rougher, we had the solar panel sitting on the floor here and I just walked around it and didn't step on it. It did get in the way a bit but, it, but this Anderson plug then runs power up to the front battery which I'll show you now. So this front battery I think is a 45 amp hour battery um, and you can see there that's the uh, solar controller which is, um, what do they call them, a regulator uh, and then a fuse board up underneath there. So the fuse board is for 
just get these tackle boxes out of the way. We have uh, one, two, I think three, four uh, USB points, and then a 12 volt cigarette lighter point, and then a battery monitor here. So the battery monitor can tell us um, how much amperage is uh, coming in from the solar and how much we're drawing out as we charge drone batteries, GoPro batteries and all that. Okay, back to the back. The other side here, the other side, again, this is all marine ply, and the other side is for, just for storage. We normally keep a fish bucket in here, um, and then you can see in there we've got paddles and we've got the extension for the, for the tiller steer so I can stand up and drive. It's so much easier standing up. Um, what else have we got in here? Obviously oars, there's always oars on board. They're telescopic ones. So all that safety gear will sit in here, life jackets, stuff like that. And I've just used a bit of strap, you can see there, and screwed a bit of plate underneath it to pinch it down. And it's just a loop. So that just, that just sits proud there like that. And then you've got a loop to pull up. Same on both sides. So the idea is to keep the whole deck flat for fishing. There's nothing sticking up like latches to kick your toes on or anything. Um, everything's nice and flat. So one person can be standing at the back fishing and one at the front at all times. Um, and we try and keep everything off the deck. You can see in this last trip when we went up the coast, we just we took more gear than we normally would, and we had boxes and uh, drone boxes and stuff on the on the main floor. And it does get a bit frustrating. I prefer to go lightweight and take next to nothing. As we come around this side of the boat, you can see we have uh, rod holders on either side, and these ones here. So we've just got elastic cord and the um, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're just like an elastic cord and a lug that you can buy together. And then the rods slip nicely up into, again, um, plumbing flanges. Now they just come from Bunnings, you can buy those from Bunnings. You can see them through here, it's just a plumbing flange and then a 40 mil plumbing pipe that goes up into the bow of the boat, into the storage area, which I'll show you in here. See here, you can see the pipes come through the front, uh, the front seat. And you can see, in, I mean, you can't quite see in there, but again, that is full flotation. So I haven't actually cut any of the flotation out of the seats. Uh, all the foam is still in there. Now I'm going to jump in the boat and show you these wings. Basically, there's a hinge, a big piano hinge down either side here. Um, underneath the piano hinge, I've fit a, I think it's a 15 by 15 or 16 by 16 mil channel and that runs right to the front of the bow there so as water comes in through the hinges which doesn't really happen it can then run out here down onto the deck and out through the bottom of the hull um, now getting in here you can see we've got dry storage it's like a shelf so it's about 150 mil deep and i did that i did that because hang on let me put this up this is another good trick for these wings I've just got the basic, where is it? Oh, there it is. So I just run a basic uh, clamp like that, again, from Bunnings. Clamps onto there and holds it open for when you're storing, when you're stacking everything in the boat, packing for a trip. Um, yeah, so when you're packing for a trip, it's all open, you can throw everything in, uh, and they're not gonna fall down in the wind. Dan and I were saying we'd like to add um, either a, a solar panel mat that you can just, when you pull up for lunch or something, you can wrap it over this or throw it over the deck or something, or have um, sticky back solar panels that go on either side for when we pull up at lunchtime. Now, the reason I've lifted uh, this higher than the seat is purely for storage. So, and again, like I said, for fishing, you want everything off the deck. Now, when these, when these drop down, you can see it's just below the surface of the gunnels which for some people isn't safe because you can obviously fall overboard. You've got not like little kids, you've got nothing for them to lean against. But for Dan and I, um, it's all about functionality, practicality and fishability. So um, I like to have that as much height as I can get. Then you have more storage as well. So, we, so I've framed this up with treated pine, um, H4 treated pine, so sorry, H3 treated pine, so it can get uh, as much moisture on it as you want. And as long as it gets in the sun, it's going to dry out and it's fine. It's not going to rot. Um, so I've lifted that oh, about 150 mil. 
and did the same at the back of the seat. And then we've got this trough and then the trough is completely dry. So we keep our phone in there, our keys in there. It's good to have your tackle boxes in there because then you know exactly where your lures are. Um, and I've done two wings so that if Dan's fishing up the front, I can say, lift your foot and he can jump on that side. You know, like if he's fishing, if he's, I've got something in there. If he's um, standing on this side here, but he's got one foot here, I can just tap him on the leg and then lift the back up and get in there. And same on either side. And also when we go away, on trips like the Wenlock, where we do six days drifting down a river, Dan gets one side, I get the other side, um, and then you know which side your bag's in, where all your sleeping bag, all that gear is. What else can I show you here? Obviously just a rod holder, rod holder for trolling and for, you know, if we're moving spots between snags, you just plonk your rod in there. Um, we run a little Garmin sounder. It runs power, obviously, off the 45 amp hour battery. Uh, a ram mount here, because we normally have an iPad to run our HEMA maps. But getting back to the construction, so yeah, this is all, all uh, marine ply. This was treated pine frame, 70 mil by 35 mil, I think it was. Marine grade carpet wrapping up and over. And then you can see along here, I've got a bit of angle. Now it's quite thick, it's about three mil angle, and it's sicker flexed to stop rattling and pop riveted into the hull in certain spots. I've actually nicked it, like you can see here, to bend it and then fixed it into this frame and into the, the side of the gunnel there. And it comes right back. Then I've got this rubber mat, which you can see has come loose on this trip. Um, it's gonna be glued back on, but this rubber mat, if any water runs down into here, the plan is it hits this rubber mat, rolls into the side of the gunnel there, and it can go right down to the stern just to keep as much moisture out of here as possible. Um, I wanna have dry storage at the front, particularly in the wet season, so we can go on adventures. and know that at the end of the day, your clothes are dry, your camera gear is dry, and everything's safe. Now, right up under the bow, we've got the anchor well. You can see that I've left that in there as it is. Um, I use that for storage as a spare prop in there. Always, boys, boys and girls, all you tinny adventurers, having a quality bow line like this, is key. Just get yourself a good bit of rope like that, that will last. I've always got that tied to the, to the bow there. And um, either Dan can hang on to it, like, or even I, if I'm driving from the back here, I'll hang on to the bow line and onto the tiller steer. Um, I think that's about it, guys. How about I show you the latest addition to the tinny is the boat cover. Um, we had that made because we've done so many trips up here and we've gone through so many cheap boat covers and they just rip and they're a nightmare to get into. If you've left something in the boat at night, you want to get one thing out, it's a nightmare. So um, I'll throw that on, but what else can I tell you guys? Maybe shoot me questions in comments and I can write back to you all individually um, because there's so many things to show on this boat. Uh, what we need to do to this is a, a trailer. This little trailer is pretty much standard and it's copped a flogging over all the trips we've had. Um, I've replaced the axle underneath, made it bigger, um, just because of damage on the side of the road and ha I've had to do that. Um, so that's, the, that's, that's gonna be the next thing, is building a kick-ass trailer for this thing to sit on. I think that's about it, guys. Basically, you know, we've got this whole front cast deck, which is quite high, as you can see here. And then we've got this lower cast deck, or this lower deck. And it, you can see through here to the floor, to the actual um, hull of the boat. If any moisture gets into here, it's going to run right through underneath, down the hull, to the back, um, to the bungs. So you've still got the whole hull underneath open for things to flow through. I run cables through there. If you're going to do, a, if you're going to build a boat like this, um, I would suggest running a bit of uh, conduit or like flexi conduit, or even just run some ropes from the stern up to the bow. So if you are going to run cables through, you know you might want to change your sounder, so you need to change your transducer cable, um, the solar at the back, things like that. You can tie. You know, say you've got, say you're going to do your transducer. If you've got lots of different ropes running from front to back, 
you can tie your transducer cable onto the back of one of the ropes, go up the front, pull the rope, and it will pull your transducer cable through to the, to the sounder. Um, same goes for the Anderson, flight power to the Anderson, things like that. Just makes life easier because if you're trying to get if you're trying to get a cable from the stern up to the bow when you've got all the floor and that all finished, I tell you what, it's bloody hard work. You might have questions about how I cut this. I don't know if my video um, when I was building it will actually show you in detail, but like I said, marine ply and um, basically work out your centre. Uh, how would I do it? So you'll have this strip in here, and then you can sit a square piece of ply on here, sit it on there, mark with a pencil, so you're scribing underneath your gunnel, marking that shape, and then get yourself a jigsaw, run your jigsaw around, and you're basically gonna keep, keep um, jigsawing that line, putting it back on, scribing it again, keep doing that until it fits. And then when it fits, you can get a belt sander or something and just, just finalize it, make it nice. Now the other thing when you're building something like this, remember your carpet, is about three to four mil thick. So if you're, like I said here, if you're trying to get that right shape and you want it to shut, if you do it, if you give it like three mil so it looks nice, you apply to your gunnel, you're not gonna get your carpet wrapped in there. Well, you will, but it's gonna be tight, it's gonna catch. Um, you need to remember that because if you want it all to be as tight as you, want, as you can so that moisture can't get down in there, like me, I'd allow about four and a half to five mil. So when you've carpeted it, you've still got like one mil, one mil clearance there for it to open. Uh, and I think that's about it. Like I said, send me some questions. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I'll give you a close look here at these rod tubes as they come through. So the butt sits back in here. These are one of the best things on the boat. They're amazing because um, you get your rods out of the way and your lures are tight against the, the gunnels of the boat um, so you're not going to get trebles stuck in your legs and stuck in your feet stepping on them or snapping rods everything is tucked in out of the way um, and then at the rod tip up in here it slips up in and I've, like I said I've got these flanges now I mean that's a bit rough but um, they're basically just screwed into the aluminium which is the existing seat you want to drill through the existing seat with a hole saw so get yourself a hole saw kit I think that's about a 42 mil hole saw or something or thereabouts, something like that. Just buy your flange, work out what size you need, buy your hole saw. You can just go, you can go bigger because the flange has this lip on it, this edge obviously. So you can do a hole, um, you know, say that's 40 mil, you can make your hole 50 mil because it's all going to cover with that flange. So, um, and always remember that these are the regulations, okay? This is the Australian builder's plate and you can't go over this and remember, um, you know, this might say, I'm not 100% sure on this, but max four people or 300 kilos. So remember that I've added um, probably a sheet and a half of marine ply to this plus carpet. You know, I might, let's just say I've taken one person off, basically. Um, so I'm down to about, I could carry about 220 kilos instead of 300 kilos on board. So just be aware of that. It is making your boat heavier. Um, which could be more dangerous, but you know build the boat to suit what you love doing. That's what it's all about All right guys, I'm out. I'm gonna hit the road and get moving I'm gonna wrap this up with a boat cover throw everything in first boat cover and get out of here. Thanks for watching Thanks for watching all our stuff Dan and I really appreciate all of you um, Make sure you subscribe make sure if you haven't watched our videos But you're watching this jump back and watch our videos because we do some wild adventures We have an absolute ball out here in the bush we're normally in super remote locations like this, east coast of Cape York, and uh, we're just doing what we love. So thank, you, thanks for watching. We appreciate you all, and we'll see you on the next one. Done.